after covering the primary lymphoid organs that is thymus and bone marrow now we are on the secondary lymphoid organs now in primary lymphoid organs we have seen that they are mainly involved in the primary education primary education to distinguish between self and non self mainly but now in the secondary lymphoid organs there will be secondary education when we talk about secondary education we mean more specificity it's not only up to self and non self now the pathogens will come and now according to that particular bacteria or virus or germ or pathogen only after, according to that education will be given this is the role of secondary lymphoid organs in humans lymph nodes and spleen are the well organized secondary lymphoid organs and the capsulated because we are well familiar on all vital organs of our body we have capsule that is covering and just like that lymph nodes and spleen will also have other than that barrier tissues that is a bunch of lymphocytes and various other immune cells this bunch which is distributed throughout the body is also present and this is mainly referred as mar mucosa associated lymphoid tissue it is present in the gastrointestinal tract if it is present in the intestine that is referred as pears patches it is present in the respiratory tract it is present in the a urinogenital system and in this way it is distributed throughout and this bunch of lymphocytes and other phagocytic or, or other immune system cells is going to provide or work like a secondary lymphoid organ and lymphatic vessels are the most essential part which are actually going to circulate lymph in our body now let's uh, take a look of Uh, the blood circulation we are well familiar from our heart suppose this is the heart from our heart originate aorta and the aorta will later split into various arteries the arteries will split split into various arterioles and these arterioles will enter in organs of our body suppose this is a vital organ of our body inside that the arteriole will enter and it will branch into millions of capillaries capillaries which are thin walled single layer and later on the capillaries will again unite to form venule and these venules will again unite to form veins the venules from various organs to form veins and now these veins will again unite and either form pre caval or post caval that is superior vena cava or inferior vena cava and pour that deoxygenated blood into the heart so from the heart originate aorta and the arteries and that's why when heart pump it will uh, pump the blood in the arteries under high pressure and after that only the blood in the arteries which will carry mainly oxygen and nutrients will supply it up to all organs but these capillaries have small pores pores is nothing but the gap between the two adjacent endothelial cells suppose this is these are the two adjacent endothelial cells then there's a small gap between that and through this gap or through this small gap between the endothelial cells will seep out no doubt no, they are actually for exchange oxygen and then carbon dioxide will be uh, uh, given back to the blood nutrients and wastage will be given back and that wastage and all these things will flow back through veins and back to the heart but through these capillaries the pores of the capillaries will seep out some plasma and along with plasma lymphocytes 
mainly these two things that is plasma and lymphocytes will seep out in the organ why only lymphocytes because rbc's are comparatively bigger in shape bigger in size uh, platelets are rough in uh, shape and other phagocytes are comparatively bigger in size and that's why the chances of the other cells to enter in the through this very small pores into the organ are less while lymphocytes are completely spherical and comparatively smaller in size as they are not phagocytic and that's why the chances of both T and B lymphocytes to enter along with plasma to seep out along with plasma in the organ is more and thus other rest of the other blood will flow back but if this mixture of plasma and lymphocytes which is white in color which is called lymph why white because it lacks RBCs a few RBC might be present but 99% of the cells in lymph are lymphocytes there might be 1% platelets or other phagocytic cell like monocytes macrophages might be there but that is only 1% but this lymph if it will keep on seeping out in the organs the organs will swell forming edema edema is nothing but the swelling this time it is called lymphodema lymphedema it might occur and it is happening in all organs of our body if this is so all organs will swell and this valuable fluid plasma in our blood will seep out in the same way into the all organs of our body and thus the blood circulation will stop blood will stop flowing because it will lost its fluid part that is plasma so what is the requirement the requirement is this valuable fluid plasma plus lymphocytes that is lymph should return back to the blood circulation to return it back lymphatic vessels will start they will be originated these lymphatic vessels will originate from organ and they this lymph with lymphocytes and plasma and some other cells one percent they will enter into these lymphatic vessels again lymphatic vessels will also are very thinner single layer and are comparatively having is more porous and that's why these will enter through it and they will be carried so this is the lymphatic vessel originated from this organ in a very similar way lymphatic vessels from various other organs will come and meet and they will again keep on meeting to each other and such lymph they will pour the lymph back into the vein generally in the superior vena cava and this is how this lymph will return back to the heart that, that is blood but when heart pumps arteries will carry the blood under high pressure in veins comparatively the pressure is quite less and that's why to avoid back through veins have valves throughout the arrangement of valves is like this Suppose we will push it from this side, it will open and that complete blood or lymph will flow. After that, as the pressure is not there, the valve will get closed and that's why avoiding backflow. Now, even if we will give pressure from this side, the wall is not going to open here. Again, when lymph or bl uh, blood will accumulate, it will give pressure and it will open and allowing it. Similar valves are present in the lymphatic system also because lymphatic system is originating from organ and flowing the lymph towards heart so there is no question of any pressure pressure will be only in arteries and because of arteries some amount of pressure will be there in the vein but lymphatic vessels are completely without pressure and that's why they have more amount of walls in between these are the walls which are present in between the lymphatic vessels and thus when 
more amount of lymph will accumulate this lymph will give pressure on the walls the wall will open and the lymph will be pushed in the forward direction and back flow is avoided this is how lymph slowly and steadily will move up to the heart and will be poured back the problem is suppose any infection because of any pathogen invading microorganism invading germ will takes place in the organ these pathogens or bacteria or viruses or any uh, germ will be carried by the lymph itself into the lymphatic system and thus along with lymphocytes and plasma the germs can also be carried which have mainly infected this organ will be carried through the lymphatic vessels now the place where many lymphatic vessels will meet an organ is formed which is being shaped and this organ is nothing but lymph node this is the lymph node now those vessels which are pouring lymph in the lymph node are afferent lymphatic vessels these all they are pouring but that which is going to uh, take out lymph from lymph node towards heart or towards blood that is called efferent lymphatic vessel and thus this pathogen or bacteria is carried where in the lymph node don't forget lymph node is an organ of our body if organ then definitely it itself will have its own arteries and again the arteries will branch into millions of capillaries and what come out of it is vein and again some amount of lymph will be formed in the lymph node itself because of its own blood circulation because lymph node will also require oxygen lymph node will also require nutrients and for that this circulation is there but the capillary network inside the lymph node is quite thin single layer and is much more porous and that's why many nine T and B cells along with APCs that is antigen presenting cells mainly monocytes macrophages dendritic cells all these can easily seep out in the lymph node itself now we are very familiar pathogen is carried APCs are also there no doubt B lymphocytes themselves are there what they will do as soon as they will absorb pathogen they will engulf process and present it in the groove of mhc class 2 we are well familiar once it will be presented th lymphocyte will come and bind through tcr and cd4 receptor and an education of that antigen or that bacteria will start this process will start in the lymphatic vessel itself but don't forget during this blood circulation of lymph node new niot and b lymphocytes and apcs will also come there and they will also start their process and this is how the education will be provided where the education is taking place in the lymph node what is lymph node lymph node is a secondary lymph node organ but who is bringing that pathogen from the infected organ towards the lymph node the nearest lymph node and that is lymphatic vessels and that's why lymphatic vessels are also considered as secondary lymph node organs they are thus now other than that <clears throat> as it is rich in lymphocytes lymphocytes especially th are the main source of many cytokines various chemokines but lymph don't have its own any uh, pumping system what how the lymph is going to flow in our body it depends on the local muscular activity 
the more you will do the muscular activity the more you will do exercise the more you do the circulation of the lymph and thus lymph which is a source of chemokines and cytokines these chemokines and cytokines the signaling molecules will be will flow in our body their circulation will take place in our body properly and that's why we should do yogas what actually yogasana is going to do it is going to stretch our body it is going to twist various parts of our body in such a way that this lymph should flow it will come under circulation otherwise lymph is not going to flow by itself it will require muscular activities and this is how the blood circulation and lymph circulation is this is the heart and this is the inferior vena cava that is post cava this is the superior vena cava that is pre cava and actually lymph from all part of the body is going to get poured only through superior vena cava inferior vena cava is not going to carry lymph because no lymphatic vessels are going to join it now you can see the superior vena cava is having three branches 1 2 and 3 and this is the left subclavian vein while this is the right subclavian vein the right subclavian vein will carry lymph from right arm and right part of the head so the right arm and right part of the head the lymph from this will be poured through right lymphatic duct to right subclavian vein and through that it will enter through superior vena cava but lymph from all other parts of the body the lymphatic vessels from all parts of the body except right head and right arm will pour itself into thoracic duct that is also called lymphatic duct because lymphatic duct becomes it is going to get lymph from all other parts and it is going to pour itself into left subclavian vein and this left subclavian vein will again join the superior vena cava this is the lymphatic circulation in our body 2.9 liters of lymph is going to seep out in our body daily in various organs and this is returned back to the lymphatic vessels in this way and don't forget lymph will always flow from the organ towards heart but blood can flow from the heart towards the organ as well as from the organ towards the heart and that's the lymphatic system help valves to avoid black flow and to make it to circulate you need to go for some stretching exercise some muscular activities then only this important source of chemokine and cytokine will be circulated in our body this is about lymphatic system thank you